Now we want to spin into this. Is I think a, a, some people have been dying for me to talk about this. Uh, I don't even know how to begin. So about a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, the Star Wars uh, franchise dropped uh, their new series, The Acolyte. I was very interested in it. Um, I don't have a bugaboo about messaging and things. I don't. We sell them. We, we talk about it sort of in like, a, I think, in a very objective way. I'm a fan of the spinoff Star Wars. I think B-Show is a fan of some of them. Shah is completely oblivious to them, but he's aware that they exist. Obviously, Shah, you know the Mandalorian. You've heard of that. Very successful. People like it. And it's supposed to be. And I, I guarantee you, if, if I could make you watch one Star Wars thing, I would make you watch. Either I'd make you watch Rogue One, the movie, because I think you would shit your pants. It's so good. Or I'd make you watch the, the first season of The Mandalorian, because it's fucking really... These things are almost like a Western feel, Shah, like these like spaghetti Western vibes. And that's the influence of a lot of these things. I'm sure you've heard nothing but good things about The Mandalorian. Yeah, I, I just have a feeling I'm going to die not watching anything Star Wars related. I think that's <laughs> probably... I know. I, well, you're you're keeping. You're almost going on year forty. You're getting close to it. Yeah, Shot, and I still haven't watched Star Wars. So still haven't seen like, Star Wars. B show. How how uh, familiar are you with the spinoffs for the for the Disney Network? I didn't watch Andor, and I heard that's good. It's good. I like it. And I watched Ahsoka, which was okay. I didn't see that because I didn't watch right. Clone Wars. Are you a Clone Wars guy? No, I've. It's just there's too much. There's like six seasons, like twenty episodes a season. I just can't. It's a lot going on. Do that. It's a lot so, going on. But I hear it's good, and a lot of people like it. Mm. Um, did I you agree. watch the Obi One? I did. I really liked the Obi One series. A lot. Liked I it. did. Marked out for that. I'm sure. You I fuck. I honestly, I'm not gonna. I don't want to sound like a bitch, but I fucking cried on. The, yeah, like, I marked out. Yeah, like shot. Like there's certain things. Like there's a lot of there's a payoff to some of these TV shows if you've been watching it for a long time, which is the way it's supposed to be, right? So anyway, they announced this series. They bring in this woman who used to be, I think, Harvey Weinstein's assistant, by the way. Uh, Leslie, Leslie Headland, Headland. Yeah. Headland. And they decide this is going to be like the gayest Star Wars of all time. Like they literally go on the press junket and say, we're going to make Star Wars very gay, almost in like a South Park way. Like, like make it, put a chick in it, make it lame, make it gay. That's a, now this was before we saw us clip one. They get a principal actress. I'm not that familiar with this actress. She was in a movie called The Hate You Give. She comes out as non-gender and then she switches to gay. I don't know what she is now. She identifies as so. And it's very, it's a super gay show um and uh they 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 promote it this way so a lot of people were like okay i'm getting a little tired of this messaging but i like star wars i'm gonna check it out but there was also look there's a segment of people who are very prejudiced have a lot of bigotry towards gay people we all know this um and they probably wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole now i watched the first two episodes and i thought it was okay not great not terrible just okay but I was warned by people when I said I thought it was okay. They go, wait till you get to the third episode. You're not going to believe. Like, like they're going to change. It's going to completely change the history. Well, they uh, – be sure they were right. Um, they went full – like, they just completely went full messaging, scrapped the entire lineage of Star Wars, and basically turned the Force into an origin created by, for lack of a better term – uh communist um lesbian space witches <laughs> um no i'm not making this is <laughs> Jesus no Christ. that's that's what they are they're communist lesbian space witches no men on the planet they remove themselves from society and th they use um magic to make babies without men um they yeah um now okay before I get even deeper with this, I'm just going to say, if that's done great, I'm totally fine. Don't care. I just like good things. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit. I just want it to be good. But I noticed the acting and the writing in the first two episodes felt very amateurish to me. Um, there's, like, just no explanation of why, like, the Jedi are, like, pieces of shit. Um, there's, like, I think one honky in there and he kills himself. It's very deliberate, like it's in your face, right? Uh, and the acting, dialogue, everything about it, just putrid. It's pretty, pretty bad. By the way, I, people for think I'm making a joke about the communist lesbian space, uh, space witches. I'm not. That's literally, they're a coven of lesbian space witches um, who, like, you know, who have the thread instead of the force. There is a clip, I don't know if you could find it, but of them chanting 
uh, willing, I guess, something into existence. And it is so terrible. In that 20 seconds, you could possibly never want to watch Star Wars again. It's all over Twitter. I don't know if you're going to find it on YouTube for strikes. But it is all over Twitter. It's, it's called The Power of One. This is it. This might be at the top. No, that's not it. I, it's on Twitter, Be sure You're not going to find it there. Um, also, I didn't realize they put the dude from Squid Game in here. Yeah, it's just very weird. It's just very, like, I don't know who this is for. Like, I don't know, like, like who, like, I don't know. The power of one. The I think I, yeah, let me see if you can find it, B-Show. It's worth just playing the 10 seconds of it, because if you think I'm exaggerating, and again, I have no bugaboo about any of this. Give me lesbian space witches all day. I don't care. Like, I'm, I would, if it's good, I'll fucking watch it, and I'll love it. Just put the acolyte. Let's put acolyte. Just the acolyte. See, this is the only issue is they're trying too hard, man. Trying it, it very always backfires. It always is it? backfires. All right, we, we... The power of two. The power of many. What the fuck? The power of one. This is real. Two. The power of many. This looks like a funnier die sketch. Yeah. This is this is this is how they will the force. Holy shit, it's bad. Yeah, this is Star Wars. Yeah, so turn this up. By the way, uh, for the cost of this series, you could have made 15 uh, Godzilla minus ones. So to that point, right, a friend of mine who's a huge Star Wars fan took me to a Star Wars movie when I was a kid. He watched Godzilla minus one recently on my recommendation, and I thought I overhyped it. And he texted me the other day and said that movie was amazing. And he said, how much was it made for? I said, like, $12 million. And he's like, dude, this... And he sent me the clip. Yeah. And he said, this was made for, like, $30 million an episode. Yeah. yeah how did they make Godzilla million. Minus One for $12 million? Okay. Well, D dude, this honestly looks like dog shit. Look, I'll be honest with you. I watched the first episode, and I quit after five minutes because yeah, it a was a, a terrible slow-motion kung fu fight with Carrie Ann Moss and Oh, that was girl. an awful choreography. Awful. Cho Everything it about it is terrible. terrible. Because they're not hiring anybody unless they fit into the stereotype. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a, like, almost everyone on the show, as far as I know, is definitely is, is, is gay, which is fine. I just don't know why you have to be that in space. Like, I thought this was an acting job. I, I, I didn't realize that. Is the, is the Wookiee gay? I don't even know. Sha, you're an outsider looking in. What happened to your penis in the 10 seconds that we played that clip? Is it oh, completely it's inverted? It's completely inside my ball sack right now. It's just, yeah. it's non existent right now at this point. It was much. so terrible. I mean, but Chop, <gasps> you said like, you I'm, think I'm, I'm perfectly, trying. I'm perfectly fine, obviously, with like the all inclusive, whatever, whatever. Like, of course you are, as we all make are. It, make it make sense, though. You know, when you go out of your way to just do it for the sake of doing it, it never comes across genuine and it just comes off kind of gross. Remember when they did the Scooby Doo show, the the reboot of that? Yeah, which they brought yeah. back. Yeah, which they brought back, even though everyone hated it, but they brought it back anyway. Similar concept. They're trying way too fucking hard to be able to just cater to everybody. It's just, it's kind of, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, there, there's a writer for Forbes. I don't know his name. But I sent you guys his video today, and he's just so good at this shit, man. Like, and I, and B Show, I'm gonna get to you because you're a bigger Star Wars fan probably than I am. I again, I don't. Give me the lesbian space witches. I don't care. I would watch that forever. Like I, if, if it's really good, I'm going to be like, wow, that was so good. And I also feel like if you're going to make a show where everyone is gay and you can make babies by magic scissoring or whatever the fuck you're doing, I don't know, magic force, <laughs> like rubbing donuts or whatever, like make it like really like make sense. Make it be like, okay, this fits into the story. This fits into, they completely now, uh, now, now, uh, Darth Vader is not the only person born from the Force. These two girls are, and they're evil twins, and one's evil, and like I, I don't know. Penis makes them throw up. I don't know what's going on there. B show, what what happened to Star Wars? I mean, do you think they just felt like they had to just flip the script on the audience there? I mean, because it's not like I, I don't, feel, I, I never, I never understood why Star Wars had to be the thing that did this. Like why did it? Like why did it have to be Star Wars? You know, because it was a five billion dollar property that got bought from from George Lucas, and instead of doing their own thing because they knew it would never succeed, they decided to tack it onto Star Wars. And honestly, I think this is a result of the fan backlash because they see everyone who says this sucks as some misogynist, sexist piece of shit. And there's there's plenty. I'm saying they see it. 
yeah. they see it as that way. It's not. Uh, but there's been a significant backlash from people who are lifelong Star Wars fans. Lifelong. Who have given up, who've walked yeah. away. Yeah. And in, they double down and yeah. they're going to continue doing this shit because to them it's theirs. And you have someone like Kathleen Kennedy. I don't know the woman, but every time I see her do an interview, it's dripping with disdain for fans of Star Wars. And she's going to make her movies and the movies she wants to make. And, she, and hiring like activists to make movies that have never made movies before. Who have not, who know, by the way, the, one of the male leads in the movie, who's like the weakest Jedi ever, who is also, is also um, uh, an ambi- uh, uh he's, uh, um, I don't know the actor's name. He's from something, but he's also gay, because that's just I, everybody's got to be gay in the movie. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody that's not gay in the cast. I really don't know, because um, including the woman who directed it, she gave her terrible actress wife a heart big role in it, and she can't act for shit, and she's terrible too. Um, but it's like it's you know, the the crazy thing about all this is one of the stars of the movie, uh, the TV show, is this guy thought Luke blew up the. the blew up the death star like he made a thing of like how darth vader blew up the death star like he said something really stupid like he's never seen the movies like shot what they're basically doing is they're saying we just need a gay latina a gay african-american a gay filipina a trans this and then we'll just put them in this universe doesn't have to make sense and even if you're not even fans of the 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 show you're just gonna oh anakin thank you uh because i know chris is very very upset about this like no joke like like Chris is a funny guy, but I know Chris is like visibly like he's like this fuck this this fuck fatty up because this is his lifelong commitment is this fucking show. But Sha, how why can't we just put people like this in this for representation and still make it good? Like why is it why can't doesn't it seem like it's now one or the other? It could either be very good, but possibly not as diverse as you want it to be, or it will be completely diverse, but we're not going to get anybody really powerful to write it or direct it or shoot it or choreograph it or score it because we're just going to go balls in on this one thing. Like, why can't we just, ha- like, why couldn't this be good? Well, once again, because they're trying too hard. I mean, I don't, I don't see a midget in there. I don't see a Buddhist. I don't see an Indian. I don't see a Muslim. Like, you know, squeeze them in there too. Why not? You know, if we're going for everything, you might as well yeah. just squeeze. I'll tell you one thing though: the um, the timing makes sense since it's Pride Month. Like, oh, of I course, guess, this was all calculated. You know, that calculated. makes sense. But that's that's about it. Like, I don't, I just, I don't know, man. I mean, again, I don't know much about Star Wars at all, but just hearing you guys talk about it, it sounds like they're trying too hard, and it never comes off genuine. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it's, it's kind of. It's kind of gross, honestly. <laughs> like it, 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 um, there is a grossness to it in an infantilizing way, like in almost like, like doesn't matter if it's good. You're just, it's just gonna be, like it's almost you know, like, like AEW. You know when they were trying too hard to just be like all inclusive with everything. We need a oh yeah, it feels shoehorned in. We need like a trans wrestler. Right. We need we need yeah. a black champion. We need an Asian high flyer. Like it was just like all right, dude, why don't you just. Get people that are actually good instead of trying to fill up spots, you know. And it, it, this kind of reminds me of AEW when they first started out, you know. Like, well, well, I I will say this, you know, it. Yikes! What I'm, nineteen what, percent is nineteen. Cool. Yeah, Bisha, would you mind pulling it up on Rotten Tomatoes? So here's yeah. also something that's happening, which is critic at Forbes. I forget his name, but he's great. Him and I corresponded a little bit. I, I this guy's like a new for me. This is a newfound guy, but he's probably been doing this for a long time. He he made a video today where he said he calls it imposter syndrome. It's when we just get people who don't like any of this, don't like the genre, don't like the history, don't respect the medium, but they check off that one box. And that's the only reason why they're there. There's no other reason for it. There's no reason. Like you are literally hired because penis makes you throw up. There's no reason like or vagina makes you throw up or or you could have a penis or a vagina like there's no other. You did not. No qualification was met. There was no, and and you know this, so so of course it's not going to be successful. B show. I want to I want to also point this out too. I want to ask you both this question because we have a bunch of stuff I want to get to on the, in the post show. So if this is a great time to get to the post show for the free this week, do you look at this audience score? It's eighteen percent. Okay, like puppies getting killed on Christmas morning would probably have a similar like 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 rating, right? The the critic score is eighty six percent. I'm going to ask you guys something very, very, very serious here because I know that we're goofing around a little bit, but 
I am under the impression that the critics know that they cannot say anything negative about this because of the messaging that it could be that they will possibly lose their jobs or lose access to the performers any of this sounding familiar people any of this sounding familiar so this critic in forbes when i asked him about this he said it's about access that it, that what i when i said it's about being canceled he said yes but it's really about access because the studios now are doubling down on this rhetoric and saying that, yeah, it's going to be inclusive no matter what. We don't care. And if you don't like it, it's because you're a sexist or a racist or a fascist or a bigot or an ist or whatever, an ism or something. Bisho, do you think the blame should lie in a lot of ways, not necessarily with the studios or the hiring, but the critics who will not honestly and critically say that this is bad because they are afraid of getting canceled, of being called a sexist or a racist or a misogynist or a homophobe. Do you think that now we've jumped the shark completely with the critics? Because to have this dichotomy between the people paying to watch it, who are the most important fucking people, critics ain't paying to watch it, and saying, well, we're going to write all that off as review bombing, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. What do you think? Where do you think the critic's responsibility is in this conversation? Is what I really want to ask. To be honest, I mean, I, I went back and forth with a guy after The Last Jedi came out, and that movie was dog shit. I that know a lot of people sucked. Sucked. people like it for certain reasons. It was sucked. fucking terrible. Terrible. And th this guy was going so Miles hard. above this, by the way. I would watch that it... five times to this one episode. Okay. Miles. But this guy would not listen to any criticism. He would just champion this movie left and right all over Twitter. He would post articles to his, his, uh, his website about how great it was on like a weekly basis. And then guess what? I saw him at Star Wars Celebration interviewing Carrie Fisher like a week later. And it's like, that's what it is. That's what it is. And, you know, you mentioned something about the movie. Like, it's so terrible. There's no artistry whatsoever. None. George Lucas took uh, swashbuckling pirates, you know, serials and Flesh Gordon and went back and looked through all history and like what the traits were of the modern myth of the hero and grafted it all together and made something really special. And these people are all just going... Okay, but why don't you like trans people? We're going to put them in this movie. I don't have a sh fucking problem with trans people. Just make the movie fucking good. Yeah, like, I mean, Rocky. Really right, they could remake Rocky, and it could be a trans character. And as long as it's good, like, yeah, absolutely. don't fuck with the formula too much, but yeah. fine. You know what I mean? So just so you do, do you good. think it's access or fear of the or or, or fear of the uh, of the orthodoxy? I think it's more access at this point because Disney is still one of the biggest movie production companies in the world. They own ABC or are owned by ABC. ESPN, they own Good Morning yeah. America, ESPN. Miramax, one of the biggest, yeah. one of the Hulu. biggest media companies. They own Hulu. They do, and with some of the biggest franchises under their umbrella. And if you like the AW fucking crowd, if you want to get a seat at the table, you cannot say this is dog shit. Absolutely. You cannot. And they, as critics, should be more honest, like the guy from Forbes. And I apologize for not finding the article because it was oh, awesome. Oh, it's so good. It's but, Eric Kane. You watched it. It's so fucking good, man. It was it, good. It, it just, it pisses me Eric off. Eric Kane because, at, Ford, at Ford. Like, I'm one of those kids who watched Star Wars as a kid and it holds a special place like in my said, heart. Like he said, yeah, it's a big part but of But at life. the same time, now, I'm like, have it. You want yeah. it? Take it. Go do anything you want with it. I got the movies I like. I like the first three. I like the second three, which are okay. And I put Rogue, uh, Rogue One up Rogue there One. with some of the originals. Oh, and yeah, Rogue One's great. Sha, let me ask you a question. Are, you, are they afraid of being canceled or are they afraid of losing access to, 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 the, to, the, material, to the stars and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and everything that comes with that? I think it's probably a combination of both. I think they definitely have a slight fear of getting canceled. I think everybody does nowadays, you know? It's unfortunate that we have to live that way, but... Um, even, I mean, I, th I think about that when I make content, I, I have to kind of watch my mouth and be careful because, you know, there's also a lot of trolls on YouTube that will clip things out of context. Um, so, I mean, even in my own personal life, I, I fear being canceled all the time. So, I mean, a gigantic conglomerate like Disney, like I can, I can see why. Right. But I, I ultimately, I hate Disney. Like I, I really <laughs> just like Disney. Like I, I'm completely against <sighs> Disney. They've destroyed physical media. Like that's that's my number one gripe with them is is they own a lot of shit I want on disc and they won't release it. 
Um, and overall, just a lot of their properties, it's just not things that I'm into. I, I love old Disney, the one yeah, that I grew up with. That, that yeah. was my shit. Yeah. Um, the current Disney, like I, I've, I bought Disney Plus when I was with my two exes ago when she had a child. You know what I mean mm -hmm. for her kid. So I haven't of even course, had yeah. Disney Plus since you know she left. Since she, oh moved wow, out. really? I haven't seen, wow. Yeah, I haven't seen Disney. Yeah, I mean, Plus I have. Anymore. I'll always have it because I have so many things I like are there. My kids like it. You what's know, it's it? like my kids. You know, what's it been like? Two and a half, three years now. Three it's years. Been, yeah, it's been over yeah. about three years plus. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I do think there is. You know, John brings up. And by the way, shout out to SD Special Dirk Livery Jones. That's my <laughs> favorite one so far. Uh, because I I loved SD Jones as a kid. I'm gonna read what uh, uh John JLD said. Nine nine nine. Okay. Since I've been introduced to Disney, Star and by the way, John is 20 years old. Since I've been introduced to Disney, Star Wars, like a year ago, I've seen so many of these similarities to it in AEW. The rampant apologists are exactly the same. The worst thing ever is actually the greatest ever. Yeah, it is. There is a there is a very big similarity between saying that this wrestling company is great and anybody who doesn't like it, it's only because they're they're hateful, or maybe they're racist or sexist, or they're a homophobe, or they or they or they're Vince apologists, a rape apologist, or the Fed, which is so boner shrinkage. You know, like I do see similarities to this because they're the same people who make money off of covering this, want to be standing there next to Swerve, going, Why are you so great, Swerve? You know. Because they can't say, hey, maybe you're not really, you probably might not, I've been ready to be a champion on television because it's Dude, kind of dead. Side note, random as fuck, but you mentioned Swerve, so I have to I, mean, I have to say this. Mm -hmm. So you know he came from CZW, right? Like, oh, yeah, he was, yeah, CZW, yeah. But, right? but he wasn't like a deathmatch guy, Shy. He was no, 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 he wasn't, he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't a death, he did do something him, very little. I used to give him the hardest time because he was friends with J-Cat, you know? Yeah. So I would I was doing a show with J-Cat for, for like a year or so, and... I, I couldn't stand Strickland just because I felt like really? he, he smiled too much. Like he was too friendly. He used to. Yeah, That's what I would say. It's like, well, this guy's too yeah. goofy for CZW. You come out, you're fucking smiling all the time. So I, I had a back and forth with Strickland for a couple months because he, he really, uh, he got really another mad wrestler. Yeah. I had a, a, a falling out with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's funny seeing him get like huge now. And I'm like, yo, this guy used to fucking he's troll huge. me on guy's Facebook. Great. I, I like him quite a bit, but he's not, he's not a great chant. They'd not put yeah. and It's not his fault. They just very flat. Very, very flat. So um, weird seeing all these dudes blow up now and become huge. Like Joe Gacy? Like, I'm like, yo, this guy. What? I don't know if he's huge. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I would consider him. Yeah, but even on TV, like, it, it throws me off seeing a lot of these guys that, you know, were just very mediocre, I don't know, six, seven years ago wrestling yeah. in front of 200 people. Oh, yeah. Fucking... Yeah, there's a lot of that. Uh, there's definitely a lot of that, but listen, you know, I just want to get before we head over because we got some great stuff coming up in the fucking in the in the post show here. Um, you know, uh, this most people do agree that uh, it's both that it's a combination of the access and the fear of going against the 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 cancel culture, going against the orthodoxy. You know, um, but I will say, people are tired. I, I mean, I definitely think there's a sea change going on. Because so many people are very, very angry about, you know, whether it's AEW and the direction that's going, they're vocal. So many people, B-Show, are like, yeah, I love Star Wars. Fuck this. I, and I have no problem with any diversity or inclusiveness of anything. But that should be an organic part of the story. That shouldn't be the story. Like, you know, I, that should just be in the story normal. And I just want to use this as an example before we leave. Prior to X-Men 97 airing, there was a shit ton of people, and we talked about it on the show, going, oh, it, the, there's a gay showrunner who, like, is going to make the show very gay, and Morph is going to be, it's going to be super gay, and trans, and all this other stuff. And then the show fucking aired, and everyone loved it, and it what didn't beat you over the head with anything, and it, Morph was fine, and everyone, and it was a rousing success. And the showrunner and the creator of it, gay guy with a gay porn. I mean, they fired him for reasons we don't know. But, you know, he might, you know, we still don't know what happened with that guy who created it. But this was a guy who made sure there was some non-gender specific representation in there. And nobody cared, B-Show. Nobody gave a shit. In fact, everyone loved it. Last I checked, am I mistaken? No, it was a rousing success, as they say. And you there's rumors that it's being renewed for like two or three more seasons. So there you go. I mean, it, it's not a, it's not a stretch to imagine that people just like crazy. good shit and they'll go along good. with it because it's because good. it's real. 
really it's, good, it's, and nobody felt like the, people felt like they were watching the X Men in the nineties, and it made them feel good. I mean, and by the way, very diverse show. The cast is diverse. The the people, the woman who plays Storm. I don't know how true this is, but the woman who plays Storm, who's an African American woman voice actress, said that she noticed. That when she did the cartoon in the 90s, they made her skin tone very light. And that, that always bothered her. And she did say this. And she said when she saw the treatment for the 97 reboot, she noticed that her skin wasn't light anymore. And that made her feel like, wow. Like, like wow. Like, I really made her feel great. And they got a non-gender specific person to play Morph. And nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. Why? Because it's good. Because it's really good. You know? I mean, that was... Dude, super diverse cast there as far as casting goes. I mean, like, you know, you have, you know, nobody is, nobody is pretending to be a minority on that show, B-Show, vo mm -hmm. vocally or anything. Anybody who's ethnically on that show plays their ethnicity. There was the Native American guy that helps uh, Storm. There's... Yeah, that's clearly not a white dude pretending to be, you know, somebody. Uh, the the Sunspot yeah. guy. I don't know what yeah. nationality is, but he, he's, he's, he's playing a portrait. Looks Hispanic, person. maybe. Yeah, or, possibly yeah. Latino. Like, you know. Like and, and like Morph, since Morph is neither really a man or a woman. Okay, we have a non-gender person doing that. Mm -hmm. It's like, why did that work so well and this failed so much? Because it was good. Because it was good. It was good. It was, yeah. And you know what's funny? You mentioned a sea change. I noticed it too. I've seen a lot on social media the past couple of days. The first couple of episodes, people were defending Acolyte. Mm -hmm. After episode three, I'm seeing very pro, like very pro inclusivity uh channels or creators on twitter and on facebook giving it and being like ah, eh, this movie this fucking sucks i don't know what they're yeah. going for here it's almost like what happened with aew when people started abandoning it because they started realizing what it was and they realized the emperor wasn't wearing any clothes yeah very it's, similar trajectory John it's JLD happening yelled it. yeah and I, and I hope i hope that disney gets the picture but yeah. there was a proxy battle a couple weeks ago where some of the venture capital said hey we're making monies to make movie. Uh, mo we're making, <laughs> we're making movies, movies to, make to make money. To make yeah. money. We're not making movies for issues, and right. they were voted down. And George George Lucas stood up for Bio Iger, and yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, look, the, the shark has been jumped. Uh, I the only thing I can hope is that you know maybe there'll be a course correction, but I highly doubt it.